And warmest greetings to you one and all. I'm Jeffrey Darty, the Christian whistleblower, coming to you live from the heartland of America, hopefully right to your heart. It's Sunday, so that means my good friend and colleague here with me today, Mr. R. Wayne Steiger. It is not your normal Sunday, and here we are again, Wayne. You know, Jeffrey, it's two years today. Actually, two That's years something. ago, yeah, I think it was 722 or something like that, but we are on the anniversary date, two years. This weekend, two years ago, yeah. 2017, we had our first Not Your Normal Sunday. We did. How <laughs> and it wasn't about a, that? It wasn't a normal show, if I remember. I, it's our first time we actually, I think, met each other. <clears throat> Close to it. How did we meet? I can't even remember. That's that's really interesting. Someone recommended that I should watch you, and I think vice versa. And whoever that someone was, um, hey, spot on on your intuitiveness. Yeah, <laughs> it was boy two on. years. That's 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 a while. Yeah, it really. So is. if we were a TV show, we'd be celebrating going over a hundredth episode, wouldn't we? Yeah, we would. Yeah, and that's a milestone in the TV business. I understand. It is. Absolutely is. And in many places. So, yeah. hey, well, here's to you, my friend. Boy, two years, we haven't fired each other or anything like that. <clears throat> no, we just go as the mighty river flows. What color is your shirt? It keeps changing colors. Uh, yeah, it's got this new special print on it. So sometimes it'll be purple. Sometimes it'll be blue. It, it, I see that. And yeah. what's it say? It says thought police. Yeah. The thought police, uh, it goes on and <laughs> it just says that we live in. Looks something. like you've had too much to think. Yeah. Something like that. I you like know, that. That's interesting. You're not supposed to be thinking. So, you're really not. No, no. They don't want you to think. And I heard of all people, Ted Cruz give a masterful discussion of what's going on in social media he says and i didn't know this but um people like google who owns youtube and facebook are given a uh, a constitutional exemption from several laws based on from libel laws i believe it is or some 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 such laws based on the assumption that they would be providing a balanced level field for all uh, types of thought and all all schools of thought and now uh, Ted Cruz senator is saying that if YouTube Google Facebook continue to overtly censor people of a conservative uh, viewpoint that he'll be introducing legislation to remove their exemption from these laws and also uh, he would go after them as a monopoly and try to break him up because Google, he said, is far larger than AT&T was when it got broke up and several other big, big uh, companies. So Ted Cruz, hats off to him. If I had a hat on, I would take it off. So, <laughs> I mean, great stuff. And we may be getting some assistance, Wayne. Well, they're under the Telecommunication Act, Section 702 is their exemption, and their exemption is that they claim to be a telecommunication company. And the wording, their lawyers, uh, this has been taken to court, and the only way it can be changed is by Congress. The, worry, the way Congress passed the law, Google, Facebook, even Amazon, is under this thing as a telecommunications company and they're not right i think it is 702 i think it is yeah, it's a 702 exemption yeah yeah ted cruz threatens to regulate facebook google and twitter and i mean this is good finally you got a guy in there that's um doing something at least and you know making holding people's feet to the fire <laughs> you know if they could get something done i i, I would applaud just something <laughs> i mean absolutely uh, i i tell you here we are three years in to this uh, administration and uh the only thing that i continue to see which neither side is talking about the democrats their candidates are not talking about it trump's not talking about it it's this debt and 
Jeff, something is really wrong here. I mean, uh, they're going to have to get the Senate convened. Um, Oh yeah, the, I heard. Trump. Let me t- let me read this before we leave this one subject. What makes the threat of political censorship so problematic is the lack of transparency, the invisibility, the ability for a handful of giant tech companies to decide if a particular speech is disfavored. Cruz said in his opening remarks, uh, stifling free speech, technological censorship, and public discourse. Cruz said that he will consider charging big tech with antitrust violations and or fraud or could remove the protection from liability provided by a decades old federal law. Mm -hmm. That's the law they're talking about. And Trump was just um, addressing, I saw something from the white house. He was talking about raising the debt limit. You just can't keep doing that. Something has to be done. It doesn't work this way. I mean, and it's interesting. I still think he's going to do something unforeseen with the debt. Well, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, this is looking a lot like 1929. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. And now, Wayne, you weren't alive in 1929. No, but I studied economics. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, Jeff, you know, the only thing that saved our bacon. Uh, and so let me paint you a scenario. 1929, we have a conflict brewing over in Europe. And our main partner ally, Britain, gets itself involved in a war that the United States was not going to get involved in. The thing was, though, our debt, we still had not recovered from the depression. The the balance sheet was unbalanced. And FDR was putting us into more debt. He was doing the Lend-Lease program. Right. Britain. And the only thing that saved our bacon was a war. So here we have Britain now. I think is at probably the tipping point of what Iran's done, taken two of their tankers. They use commandos, the Iranians did. So that's a violation. That's an act of war. Uh, you're on the open seas and you send military of your flag onto a sovereign nation's property. That is a violation of war. Britain has said this morning they are going to attack. I have heard that Trump is working right now and getting a coalition. They are going to strike. Mm. Well, let's hope not. I, I'm still in the no war camp, and it'd be a mistake. And I think Trump, I still think Trump wants to work a deal, so we'll see what happens. But what do you do with bullies? You ever known a bully in your life? I have known a bully in my life. And, and, and how well did it work out when you tried to make peace with him? Well, there's, a, there's I mean, I didn't <laughs> shoot the bully. I punched him in the nose. So, <laughs> so and that's, but that is a very good correlation. I mean, I think we're going to give him a punch in the nose. Well, we'll see what happens. Anyway, so the world is. Um, the world is a very, very interesting place. It's crazy. And getting more interesting all the time, really. And I saw something, uh, Robert Stanley and I have been talking over the past few days, done a couple shows on it. And this is a uh, very interesting, <clears throat> and I don't know if I can, how well I'm going to be able to do this, but I want to share something with the audience. Uh, shoot. Wait a second. Let me cancel this. Let me save this image first. I want to show you something at the salute to America. And Robert has sent this out to uh, a professional photographer. So we'll be getting a professional evaluation of this image. And I found it to be um, personally rather fascinating. Let me just make it as big as I can here. I'm not as good at this as Wayne is. Just take your time. That's all I Let's share this. I'm going to share desktop one. And you can probably let me know when you can see that. Share. Hit the share button, Jeff. There it goes. There we go. So this obviously is the salute to America. And this is the, the huge crowd there on the mall. And if I can get this to zoom like I want it to, if you zoom into this real tight and pull over, voila, what do you see over here in the upper right-hand corner? But it looks like some um, observers up here. You see those? Mm. <laughs> and then if you go over to the other side, uh, look at that. There's some more observers over here. So we're going to have that uh, analyzed by a professional photographer and see what they come up with. But Robert Stanley contends that since the 50s, there's been huge UFO sightings and UFO activity over 
Washington, D.C., and he contends that it's not really all that secretive, that the people there are kind of aware of it, and it's almost passe, but of course he advocates, and I'm pretty much in his uh, camp, that the Salute to America was actually a banishing of dark spirits from Washington, D.C., and a cleansing, maybe militarily, of the base at China Lake, so there's that. No, no. Um, you know, I, the day the earth stood still was taken from the actual incident in, um, you know, July of 1952. No, uh, I did not know that. Mm-hmm. That's where it came from. The day yeah. the earth stood, till, stood still was taken from a actual incident. Yeah, right over when the, it was called the uh, D.C. invasion, uh, the summer of uh, 1952. Now, I saw the original. I never saw the remake with Keanu Reeves. Is it worth watching? No, nah, nah. <laughs> I couldn't get the same uh, essence, you know, n nothing more dramatic than having a flying saucer laying right on, you know, uh, the, you know, the memorial. <laughs> well, a squadron of that looked very much like those uh, two uh, formations that we saw at a salute to America, a squadron of those suckers flew over the White House, mm -hmm. just blatantly flew over the U.S. White House. And also over the Capitol. Yeah, that's what I meant, the Capitol. Yeah, it scared the crap they out of me. <laughs> you know, the next time you have Laura, ask her, you know, where you know, her dad's position on it. it was like, okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and all right. <laughs> during 1952 remains, as of 2019, as the year with the most reported UFO sightings in American history. Think about that. Yeah. I mean, the question becomes, you know, have they, have they solved the technology of the vast distances of space? Have they figured out how to keep bio units like this, um, you know, alive from the rate? I mean, there's a lot of questions. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know if these are actually from other planets, if they're more interdimensional. That's the, that's the million dollar question, so to speak. And I came across a book there's actually three of them. I'm reading the second one now. And they're written as children's books, but they're not really children's books. And they are talking about a extraterrestrial uh, interaction. And th those people claim, and this is fascinating to me, and if true, would demand a complete rethought of mo much of our ideas regarding ufology and extraterrestrials. They claim that any being or race that is malevolent in intent is never allowed to leave its own planet so that there has never been and never will be in this thought malevolent ETs, malevolent beings marauding through the universe. If that's true, then we have to ask, what are all these things that we think are malevolent ETs marauding through the universe? But wouldn't the Homo sapiens sapiens fall underneath that marauding, murderous group? Which is why we haven't been allowed to leave the planet yet. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I think we're quarantined. Yeah, we are. We're quarantined, um, according to this um, realm of this uh, line of thought. I, I think it's spot on. I mean, I, I've done two shows on this, and, and now it's it's everywhere. But, you know, Musk's announcement on Tuesday uh, – if, in fact, they pull this off and they get into human clinical trials, uh, I'm saying that we are witnessing the single largest evolutionary leap of our species from what we call bio-based units to bio-machine. Now, isn't Rex on record as saying if there was a, a great chip like that, that he'd take it? I think the question becomes, would you take it? Yeah. Well, how about you? Would you take it? Lynn and I have talked, we talked about four hours uh, with a group on this. And uh, where did you find a group to talk about this with? We have people, <laughs> close friends. And just share like a meetup or something? Yeah, just sharing coffee. And uh, do you have like a meetup group there? In no, no, no. These are just, you know, casual friends that we hang out with. And the thing that the question is all right, Jeff, you have an aneurysm. Now, this chip... I don't. No, no. Let's just say, hypothetically, you have an aneurysm. Yeah. The, 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 the thing about it is, is that... Yeah, here's my concern. I, I don't care so much about what the chip can do to us intelligently. I think it's going to change us. I'm still asking, if it's inserted a living brain, 
are we touching the consciousness of man? My thought is the soul. My thought is if it was what they said it was, I might think about it, but it rarely is what they say it is. So what is writing on that? What's along with it? Is it just to make us smarter, faster, more cognitive, all the stuff that Musk is talking about? Or, oh, yeah, by the way, we're also going to track you. We're also going to be able to do uh, voice-to-skull technology. We're also going to be able to well, read your mind. We're also going to be able to implant thoughts into your mind that you think are your own. It's Bluetooth, so it's like uh, it's like your own uh, it's like your own imaginary friend. Wow, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I I I think we're moving too fast. I don't think as a species we're ready for this. I mean, nice we're to talking, see you, Tanhan Group. Um, Jeff, we're talking about immortality here, and then let's take this over to the. Would it make us live longer, though? Okay, so the holy grail of, Am uh, of Silicon Valley has been this. is the transfer, and Google's been spending billions on this. Transfer of human consciousness? Yes, and now that you have Ooh, this chip. They're going to store human consciousness. We're talking Free Jack, the movie here, buddy. And Tanhawk says that, and, makes, and I think Cynthia said this to me too, that this whole idea of ETs, aliens, are us from the future coming back. I don't know. Um, Listen, if you can learn Kung Fu, as Elon said, in about 30 seconds, um, we're talking rapid advancement. And here's my, uh, I like this. The Keanu Reeves said, whoa, whoa, I know Kung Fu. This is going to be the ultimate class separation because only the wealthy, I think, are going to have access to the chip. Yeah, that would be the thing. You'd have to give it to everybody, wouldn't you? Make it part of Medicare for all that's going to come from... Um I can't remember even one of the Democratic candidates. <laughs> uh, I don't know, was it Warren or one of them? But uh, I don't know. I mean, we are a savage race. And now we're talking about literally the transference of one's consciousness. This is immortality. I well, said so if, when you die, if you die, they could pull this chip out and have everything that you've thought about. How would you like to have all the things that you think about on display? Well... That not a real attractive thought. Think about your digital surrogate now. You become real. <laughs> Gary Baxter says, how, like a 400-pound guy suddenly knowing kung fu. Well, but Gary, on the other hand, that would also cause you to lose weight. Or you could, I mean, let's say that someone is morbidly obese. You, would, you could just put into them, stop eating, you hate food. I don't, or you only like celery, and then they could lose weight. I, I think this is serious. It's your own personal willpower, only it's not your own personal will. Bingo. I mean, is, is there a presence that actually oversees the, over, uh, the Internet? Is there something? You know what, Wayne? It's just the next logical step. People have already sold their souls. People have already given away their sovereignty and their divinity. Why not take the chip and save the rest of us a little bit of money? You're a drone anyway. Lose some weight, stop smoking, <laughs> quit going to McDonald's, quit being a burden to society. Please take chip. I'm tired of carrying your weight. So think about this. Um, I look at this and, and I, I'm sitting here going, so where does this lead to? I mean, if I took this in the book of Revelation and I said, well, is this maybe what John the seer saw? Did he see something that would truly, I mean, this is how you can control everybody. You don't need a bank account anymore. You don't need anything anymore. You don't need a driver's license. Every law enforcement, military personnel would be able to scan you immediately and have your ID card already up here. They would be able to do the port. I mean, this is, this is, um, this is 1984 on steroids. Yeah, so we don't need your papers. Oh, no, no, they'll scan you. Exactly, boom. So is this the uh, mark of the beast? Wow, that's interesting stuff, huh? Well, I mean, you're, you're the Christian whistleblower. I'm asking you. Well, the text says that the mark of the beast was money, the imprint of an image on a coin. So literally speaking, textually speaking, the mark of the beast is money. So the answer to that textually is no. But if you look at this chip, it does look – I, I, if you go back and look how they looked at it, I think it could be a coin. I mean, I understand the difference of 2,000 years, mm -hmm. 
this looks to me like the potential of the Holy Grail that it's going to save mankind. But I think at the other hand, it, it's just going to be the internal prison. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And Gary Baxter is actually more correct with the literal rendering. Um, a coin press with the image of Caesar is what it literally says. So I call this the God chip, the God chip. Yeah. I, and I how said, analogous is it to the Jesus cookie that our Catholic friends eat every, every, uh, they'll just put it in the, in the, uh, transom. They'll put it in the Jesus cookie and then boom, you got it. Uh, I mean, if, if there is a God that is in a physical presence, I think this would piss him off. Cynthia L says there's a USB port in your neck. It's on the chip. It, it oh, has, it's on the chip. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and the, the, I think Model 5 they're talking about has the Bluetooth. So it is just like the damn uh, Matrix. It's, it's, it's jacking in. Free Jack, Mick Jagger. That was a good movie. It was. Uh, and, Estevez, right? Yeah. Um, think about this. Uh, Anthony Hawkins played the uh, the villain in oh, that. That's right. That's right. And uh, it, it's. I think we're there. I think if they hacked you. So every parent now has a, you know twenty years in the future. When a child is born, they immediately get the chip. And I mean, someone could hack your kid. I was like, would hey, you be able to hack your kid and make them not do stupid stuff when they're a teenager? I mean, I just don't know where the protocols on this is. I keep on asking myself, is this getting AI the spirituality it's been seeking? Yeah, there's no way I would take it. You wouldn't take it? No. Nah. That's no. what that's what we came to the conclusion. You know, I like my life. <laughs> I really yeah. do. It's a, it's a good life. And um I don't want to live forever in this this reality. I don't. What did Queen, uh, the Queen's song say? Who wants to live forever when love must die? Oh, Freddie, we were, in fact, we were watching Freddie. <laughs> oh, were you? Well, the well, whole you mean Rhapsody, it's a good movie. Um, yeah, I haven't seen it. I've, I've had several people tell me to look at it. It's, it's a good flick. It's, it's uh, well done, tastefully done. And uh, the thing about it is you realize Freddie Mercury was just a, a tortured soul. Interesting. He really was. He was just torn. As creative as he was. What do you think it was that he was tortured about? I believe they were looking for what we have. You know, the whole era of rock and roll was, you know, it was the stardom, you know, we redefined what fame was. Today, kids want to become, by the way, to digress, the number one job that eight to 12 year olds want to have when they grow up is to be a YouTuber. Are you serious? Yep. That is the number so one. So True event. Penny says, ugh, this is fear porn. Y'all have a good day. It's not fear porn. I mean, I don't get that. I how mean, do you I say it's fear that. porn? We're that's just talking about stuff. So that's, that's part of the problem. You see, you know, well, true penny. Well, bye. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I mean, if you can't discuss this, then you're, you're, then it's the ostrich syndrome. I'm a little snowflake <laughs> short and stout. Oh, no, well, no, no, sort no, of no. Like that. but anyway, yeah. So now she's mad. Cause I called her fat, Uh oh. but I didn't really, it was just a song. Uh, so, I mean, what's your take on this? I mean, when I look at this, I think, is this evil? Is, is this man's creation or is this our creation that we've given birth to? Where, where does this, it's, it's a weird dilemma, Jeff. I am I, not about to, I mean, the idea in theory, if, I mean, if you could, if you knew that it was going to be beneficial and you knew that there was no, um, there was no malevolence potential in it and you could trust the people giving it to you, but it's the government. <laughs> there's no way I'm going to trust the government to implant something into my body. Wayne, every, if I let myself, I worry about the six and a half years I spent in the air force and all the shots they shot into me, what they gave me. Now that's mm. been a long time ago, but still I wonder about it. So I no, no, thank you. I've had enough, please. I don't need another. <laughs> oh, come on. I mean, no. what was it? Uh, the Jefferson airplane said, you know, one pill will make you uh, taller. One pill will make you smaller. <laughs> the, the ones that mama gave you no longer. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I, I no. there's no way I take no. the chip. I'd, I'd rather I'll be the last 
uh, the last, I'll be the last of the last generations of real humans. And if you get implanted, you're not a real human anymore. Forget it. You're it's over. You're, you're something else. You're on your way to being, um, like commander data on star Trek, some type. Well, he wasn't, he was <laughs> not even, you're on your way to being a Borg, some type of a cybernetic a life form. Yeah, it, it, you, it's transhumanism. Let's call it for what it is. This yeah. is the, the missing link. We've looked for the missing link between man and eight. You know, that's, that's the whole thing. You know, I heard something. I, I watched the show Hannibal. Yeah. And I've, I've been rewatching it. And there was a line in there that I never thought of, but I'm like, whoa, that might be true. And one of the characters says, we've been looking for the missing link all these years. And the fact is that we probably ate him. <laughs> I have to go catch that line. That's a good one. We, we might have up. eaten the missing link. I don't think there really is a missing link. But. I don't know if there is. I mean, there's one guy out there has a theory that uh, how we advanced was that we actually ate the brains. <laughs> of the others yeah. that, uh, and that's what gave us the protein that enzyme to uh jack the uh the cognitive parts well, of i us. haven't heard brains i heard when we started eating meat it gave us the leave yeah so, but this I guy mean, actually says it was a brain so went, <laughs> well i haven't eaten any brains knowingly well you know down in texas they sell uh brains, is that where we really all zombies mm. Isn't that what zombies do? They eat brains, right? They love to eat brains. Well, you know, if you want to take that, then you could say, well, zombies eat flesh. They do. <laughs> oh, man. And, you know, again, I had, um, I had, do you know who John X Army is? No. He's got a big YouTube channel, and he was a massive fear porn guy, and he has had a revelation, and he's not going to do fear porn anymore. And I had him on the channel, which is really nice. And he has also turned over a new leaf to be a vegan. So, I mean, I, I, I'd be honest with you, the pull to be a vegan for moral reasons is ever present on me. I wish I could do it. I want to do it in my heart. I'm a vegan, but physically I can't do it. My body just won't do it. I tried it for two years and it just doesn't work for me. And I wonder if it really works for anybody long-term. You've met Lynn. She's a straight shooter and she'll tell you physiologically there are people who cannot go without the protein that is derived from meat. And I know that all the other things, but listen, it's, it's a fact. Can some people be vegan and be healthy? They will end up having deficiencies no matter what in one form or the other. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, Jay Campbell has always maintained. And he does a lot of study and you could call him an expert on, you know, the human body and he has a lot of doctors that he's friends with and, He's always maintained the same things. You can be a vegan for, uh, you know, many, many years and seemingly be okay. But at the end, it's going to get you. It is. I mean, you know, I was raised on a farm for a while. We, you know, we raised rabbits, chickens. Um, we had two uh, calves that I helped raise and we butchered them. And, and I, mean, I understand. And then we have somebody in the chat room all caps. The smell of burnt meat is an aphrodisiac of the Elohim. I understand the emotionalism of it, but let's take a deep breath. Let's gather ourselves and let's stop with the knee jerk reactionism. Hey, listen, none of us were there. They probably had a big pot of barbecue sauce. Don't yeah. think they didn't. <laughs> yeah. And I, like I just said, I don't like it, but I think it's part of and then you're talking crap. Protein comes from plants. Okay, David. We'll, well see David, you in a few years. I friend. don't think you'd want to mess with my wife. David. Yeah. And tell them who your wife is, by the way, what she my does. My wife's a 40 years in nurse and um, holds a C level in nursing over a lot of patients, David. I'll take her knowledge over your barter any day. But I mean, it is at the end of the day, a. It, it, oh, Tracy Dyer, animals eat animals. Are you condemning them? Interesting. <laughs> well, you know, very odd that you mentioned that, you know, as I was watching the rainfall yesterday. And by the way, plants are alive too. They are. They sing. They, they have emotions. They do. They communicate it's, with one another. Isn't it odd how we want to make the minutia and fractalize this when this whole reality is about being eaten? It is, and I don't eat anything with a face. I well, mean, congratulations, you're still eating live things, whether you like it or not. If you if you don't want to consume any living being, you got to stop breathing. Exactly, because you breathe in 
beings and kill them. You murderer! <laughs> it's Why don't the... you smother yourself? If you really <laughs> loved everything, you'd smother yourself. We have... And this is the point, Jeff. This is what this reality is. You eat in order to survive. Unfortunately, in the world that we're in, I mean, at the end of the day, it is a world of death, and we're trying to get a world to a world of life. And, Plants and, don't have blood, though. Yes, yeah, so? So now, if you don't have blood, you're not alive? If that makes you feel better, enjoy the salad that you're killing today. Just saying. I say I'm going to have barbecue today, and it's just the way it is. Uh, and plants feel pain, too. They cry out. They do. When they're broken, when they're eaten, when they're cut, they cry out. It's easier to eat them when you can't hear. Ooh. I, was, I, I have something, of, just a fireball that I was going to throw. <laughs> I don't think I'll do that. Well, um, I don't think I'll do it because it, it, it had to do with taking advantage of the most innocent and thinking that's okay, but I'll just leave that go. Isn't it odd that we debate these things amongst ourselves and, you know, we, we try to segregate ourselves and saying, well, I don't kill because I don't eat this or I don't do this because I don't do that. You know, that's a dog chasing its tail. That's all it the is. The part that I don't like is assuming moral superiority mm. because of what you choose to kill and eat. Mm. Now, well, I'm sorry, but definitely. being a vegetarian, <laughs> being a vegan – does not make you morally superior. And I don't look down on you because you want to kill all the poor little plants. I understand. It's, a, it's what we have to do in this dimension. And if you want to feel morally superior while you slowly but surely fall away from optimization. Well, I'm going to be the party here. You. And I'm going to be the party pooper. Remember, Father of the Bride, Mar uh, Martin, I'm going to be the party pooper. So all you vegans, you're probably buying your food at the grocery store. You're probably buying organic. They're saying it's organic, but the truth of the matter is in the United States, virtually all food, all plant food has some glodium glossomate in it in one form. Uh, in fact, when you look at the way fruit has been grown in the United States over the last 60 years, we've used petrochemicals virtually to saturate everything's out there. Now, your seed, you can say, well, I have heirloom seed. I don't know that many people that actually grow their own food. So yeah. it, it's hypocrisy. And by the way, um, um, beer and french fries is vegan. I... <laughs> I love it. I love it. There you go. You know, I, I just say, can't we all just get along? You know, listen. exactly. If you want to eat only plants, great. If that makes you feel better, great. Just don't try to say that I'm a bad neural, guy. Moral you know? Superiority over me because I choose to eat something differently. I love the smell of barbecue. It's, it's you know, I, there's nothing wrong with a good brisket. Am I, am I just, Speaking for myself here or what? Now, I would much prefer to be able to get my um, meat from local, you know, ethically um, raised and slaughtered beef, ethically slaughtered. That's. But then again, you got Tolstoy saying as long as there's slaughterhouses, there'll be battlefields. I yeah. get it. Yeah. I, I get it. I wish it were different. It's not. I mean, if we want to take it, this is, you know, when we talk about this whole, whole thing, doesn't this go back to the garden when God had to slaughter the first animal to clothe Adam and Eve? That well, was the go. first. How about, where's all my Christian vegans at? That was the first Your animal sacrifice. God sacrificed an animal. Literally. Now, what's interesting, we never found out what he did with the meat. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. They left that out of the story. Yeah. So he slew. And this is the thing that gets me. This God slays the very thing he created in order to put clothes over on this that he created. Yeah. A blood sacrifice. If that's what happened. But yeah, exactly. The first blood sacrifice. And you, we were in for a shit storm for the rest of eternity from there. Yeah. There's a NFL player named Gerald McCoy. He used to play for the Tampa yeah. Bay Buccaneers. Now he's 
He uh, plays for the this year for the Carolina Panthers. And he's a defensive lineman down in what they call the trenches. And he went vegan. And one of the guys who was interviewing said, where do you get your protein from? He says, I get my protein from where your protein gets its protein, from plants. And the guy said to him, good point. Um, it's training camp now. Let's wait and see what happens when you're nine, ten games into the season. Tell me if you're still a vegan. I'm watching that. That'll be very interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, Pete I wonder- Rose tried to become a vegan to extend his career, had to quit it. Bill Walton was a vegan, kept breaking his bones. It's just, it's just not optimal in this real world in which we live in. And unfortunately, we have to live in the real world. WSO is in the house. And what is WSO adding? He says tomatoes are very expressive. Huh. And he's being serious, I think. I don't know. But they do, I mean, plants do express. There's no doubt about it. Oh, they do. They, you know, <laughs> talk to them. <laughs> K.W. Harris says Einstein switched to vegetarianism, then he died. <laughs> then he died. He was out Not of Not that it. smart. I don't think Tesla ever became a vegan. <laughs> this is hilarious. David Lewis, and I'm sure that he's got tongue in cheek when he says this. The strongest man in the world, Popeye, was a vegan. You're not correct. No, I, well, you know. We don't know that Popeye was vegan. All we know, know. is he ate his spinach. Yeah, I mean, that was the whole mantra, right? Yeah. I, I still say it was probably owned by <laughs> the Green Valley people, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, ho, ho, ho. Oh, oh, yeah. It's like, and actually, spinach. WSO says moral superiority. That's, yeah, that's what yeah. we don't want. Yeah. We, you know, it's like, Live and let live. You know, that's the way my attitude is. It's Jerry like, Baxter talks about the devil's spinach. What is that? I don't know, but I have pulled devil root in a garden before. Yeah. You know what devil root is? I don't. What's, we call it devil weed, but the root goes all the way down to hell. Oh, wow. I mean, seriously. <laughs> Popeye, I'm strong to the finish because I eat my spinach. I'm Popeye the sailor man. Gah, 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 gah. But, but did not Popeye, um, who was the guy who wanted the burger? Um, that was Opie, not Opie. I don't know what that guy's uh, name was. Come Shane on, makes a good point. The key to healthy veganism is high quality soil. And guess what? There ain't none of that left on this planet. I, I haven't found any of it. You know, when I saw the news now when, nutrients. when we had our heat wave here. Heat indexes, the UV indexes now up to 15 at the scale now. Ten Wimpy years. was the guy that liked Wimpy, the Wimpy, thank you. Thank you. Way to go. So Tesla now we have, supposedly abstained from sex. Well, now that or I Or did he have trouble getting a date? I'm just asking. I think Tesla was, was on the other side. Yeah. I really do. I think the man transcended that which uh, most people would like. How about lacto-ovo vegetarianism? That makes sense to me. Some eggs, some dairy, get your protein from eggs, and not have to kill any, um, any animals. Of course, except for those baby chickens that you're preventing from being born, but we won't talk about that. Uh, you know, this is an argument that I don't think there's any solution. It's right. very, very circular. It, it's, it really it is. round and round and round. At the end of the day, we all have to eat. We do. I mean, Tesla was beyond sex, says pork chop gang Terry. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. I, Pescatarian. I really can. I think that it's very possible. You know, this was the flaw of these bodies. They say about the grays. The interesting thing about the grays is, is that um, they absorb everything, all the nutrients, everything they need through their skin, in which we could if our body was designed that way. Right. Sponges also the waste back out through the skin. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. And somebody talking about beans, they're actually toxic to the human body. If you What's really that? look at it. But what? Beans. Beans? Grains, yeah. Toxic to the human body. I didn't know that. Yeah. Re- study it. Look it up. Hmm. But anyway, they're like lentil beans and pinto beans. And yep, they're, they're t- why do you think they, they're called the musical fruit? Because they're not <laughs> good for you. Well, I'll have to they check cause into that. Gastric distress. Well, Breatharianism, that's the way to go. I, that's where I was trying to get there, but I yeah, never make it. That's a good point. That's the, 
but we can't do that. I wish we could. I mean, when you study how much it takes to digest food, just think if we could put all that think to the, the head. Energy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, but then again, it's food. I mean, I go back and I look at Neanderthals. They were hunter gatherers. So selenium is an issue. WSO yeah. talking about selenium. How are you going to get that from your turnips? <laughs> I don't eat turnips. <laughs> Those I like turnips. Do you really? Oh, I do. <sighs> I think they're tasty. Really? They're very hard they to cook. Dis- they, yeah, they are. They have a. Dis- it's like radishes. You have to have a certain taste for, you know, certain things. Um, Not a big. Oh. Susan says you can boil beans for 30 minutes to get rid of the cyanide. Are you sure? And if it has cyanide in it, I think I'll find something else to eat that doesn't have cyanide in it. That's just me. But good luck with that. Well, I guess I'm going to condemn because I like a big batch of pinto beans with a ham hock in there. Let that cook all day. You put the beans in the night before in the cold water in your fridge, you know, yeah, it doesn't give you any yeah. gas. Yeah. It doesn't? No. Mm-mm. I'll have you and Cynthia when y'all come back I through. Pass, you, don't, you pass the gas. You don't pass gas. Do you know the interesting thing is, is that if you don't pass the gas, that it'll eventually come out through your mouth? Oh, that's a nice thought. It's serious. It's true. So if you don't pass the gas, the gas will eventually come out of your mouth. Oh, wow. So which would you prefer? Well, now I just think I got a new word for a politician. <laughs> well, there you go. Now you know. Now that's where the term "potty mouth" came from. That must be it. That had to be it. It's <laughs> so. I want to show you how the play in words go. So we've been talking about uh, vegetarians. So, mm-hmm. so we t- we use the term today "OMG" quite regularly. Yeah. If you switch the letters, you get GMO. Oh, nice. And today, the GMOs are everywhere. Yep. Uh, So has the OMG become the GMO? That's interesting. I like that. I don't know. The next one is... Um, By the way, ladies and gentlemen... If you're uh, if you're a vegetarian, you're going to be very high-minded. Um, little factoid: Adolf Hitler, vegetarian. Was he? Yes. Just saying. <laughs> oh, I don't we really want to draw this road analogy. on that one. <laughs> you're winning a war. You're kicking ass. You're taking names, and then all of a sudden, you decide. Let me start a two-front war, which everyone knows is stupid, unless you're a long-term vegetarian. I, I'm just putting it out there for your consideration. Hmm. I've never heard that connection made before. Why did Hitler do something so stupid? He was a long-time vegetarian, and maybe he got to that point where you, you're going to get to if you're not consuming some animal protein. Anyway, literally, Hitler was a vegetarian, yes. Didn't, uh, that is very interesting. So I wonder if uh, Alex or Cruxley, um, probably, is, probably. yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, that said that he sent a, uh, a deceiving spirit upon Hitler. I've never heard that story. Yeah. So I wonder if that, that's interesting. I did not know that Hitler was a, a vegetarian. Yep. I, Hardcore vegetarian. Wow. Crowley was not a vegetarian. Crowley was a big game hunter. <laughs> he looked like he never missed a meal. I'll put it that way. Yeah, <laughs> he must have ate a lot of beans. <laughs> Between him and uh, Churchill, I mean, those two, I think, had a, uh, um, I don't know. They, they were very. Somebody saying Crowley ate babies. No, he didn't. Don't oh, come on. Ate. You know, I told you what they were doing uh, a certain group I heard over on Facebook um, saying that I had become uh, a Luciferian. Uh, Wayne, there's a lot of butthurtedness in the chat room today. Is there? A lot of butthurtedness. What's what's wrong? I don't know. A lot of people's butts are hurt over the vegetarian talk. Come on. Oh, people. come on, folks. It's come on. You know, what your moment of death, is this really going to matter? Is it really going to matter? No. 
listen, I'll just say this. I don't say this on our Sunday uh, show here, but I just invoke favor on you. Yeah, absolutely. If, 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 you're, if your feelings are hurt, I just invoke favor on you. You know, we don't. Yeah, absolutely. Um, venison is my red meat. Very Southern taste. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Um, I, I think. Oh, sheep to the earth for food, says Kenny. Now we're taking it to a whole new level. Well, if you want to get back into the whole esoteric thing, I mean, did not God give Adam, uh, make Adam God over the earth, over all living things, yep. over everything that grows, everything else? Yeah, and Gary Baxter recommends aloe wipes for a sore anus after the show. <laughs> I love Gary. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, you know, Jeff, now we can get another line going. You know, you can get a cup of shut up coffee. Now you can get a wipe. <laughs> for, oh, there you go. The red ass. You know? Shut up wipes. <laughs> there you go. Oh, but folks, we probably eat too much meat, wouldn't you say? I think we eat too much, period. Um, you know, you look at the commercials. Well the, said. The Generation Z or whatever the snowflakes, they're being fed this. I don't know what the hell they're being fed, but how can you get a box that big full of food for $10? And I'm going, well, something right here. And, you know, uh, don't want to give the other chicken joint anything, but right. they are, they're making recipes. I mean, I'll just say they put Cheeto flavoring in the dust on the chicken and then put Cheetos on top of it. Really? I, the, uh, <laughs> I mean, that would give any 20 year old potentially a cardiac arrest right there with the amount of, uh, cholesterol that this is crazy. And, people uh, are crazy. They are crazy. Jeff, it's, it's scary out there. I mean, I don't know. I, it, it seems to get a little, it just seems to me that people are more angrier today. I think it was the Pew Research poll that did a thing. They said, and he says you had him at Cheeto dust. <laughs> uh, can you see that? Here we go. Let's put this Cheeto dust. And you know, the next thing they're probably going to be selling it. Let's By the put, way, the next, let's try crunched up Doritos. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the next thing. Taco Bell's going to come out with it. Speaking of which, have you noticed that in the store One with nature, did you hear the part where I said I was vegan for two years? I didn't hear that part. No, completely forgot that. I didn't part. Complete that part. Remember last week we talked about peas. Yes, I do remember that. There is a worldwide shortage of peas. No kidding. Yes, sir. Um, Pea protein is supposedly the best protein for that you. That is. By the way. That's by the way, it's the most uh, as a vegetable rep represents a rep replicates meat in the body interesting they don't they don't taste like meat i love peas uh but i no. do love peas too yeah uh but there especially is especially those little lassure peas yes lassure mm, yeah. but worldwide shortage on that uh and it why almost is there a worldwide shortage on peas i don't know but uh after we got off the air i started getting emails people were apparently fact checking us and uh next thing i know i'm getting flooded in you know walmart was the first one to say it now it's costco they're all out there you can't Ooh. what i might have lost all respect for tracy dyer why is that <laughs> peanut butter and jelly with doritos in it <sighs> yuck my kid brother, when we were kids, he used to get the butter tray. Yeah. And I can remember that he would take butter and like to eat mayonnaise with it. Ooh. <laughs> Rooney loves butter. But does Rooney? He'll get like, and he runs around here and I'll see him up on the counter licking the edges of the butter holder <laughs> thing. He loves butter. Ah, uh, Rooney's a cool cat. He loves butter. That's all I know. I uh, yeah, uh, that's one of those things that. And Tracy's uh, saying no. I'm not pregnant. 
Well, Tracy, that does sound like a combo, you know, that um, um, ladies do get uh, when they get those urges. I like this from Angelina Seven Love. If you like being a vegetarian, be one. If you like meeting, eating meat, do it. Stop the butthurt. We're all sovereign and free to make our own decisions. I'll I like just say, I like Cat Stevens. You know, you can be whatever D. Gunnion, you want. D. Gunyan says, Jeff, can you converse instead of reading comments? Sorry, it's more, so much more interesting. D. Gunyan, you can run your show any way you want to run your show. And I'll run mine any way I want to run mine. Thank you very much for the, for the suggestion, though. I am the co-pilot. You know. And then people say, how come you never look at the comments? You can't <laughs> please everybody, Wayne. Rick and Nelson even, said it best. Ooh. Learn to please yourself. Who said that? Ricky Nelson. Oh, did he? Garden party song. Oh, nice. I went to a garden party. And, you know, and he says, I played the old songs. That's oh, what that's I thought right. they came. Um, and when he was looking like he did, he said, well, guess what, folks? You got to learn to please yourself. Yeah. And somebody just ridiculously said, why do meat eaters get all mad at vegetarians? It's exactly the other way around. You know, we're a modern society, folks. We, we live in populated areas of congestion, very deeply packed. If we had this utopia, I'd love it, Jeff. I'd love to go out there and walk the balance and have the perfect diet, but it's not there. Uh, and again, I, I started this off by saying, uh, morally, I wish I could. I tried for two years and I can't. And medical science shows that none of you can long term. I, it's just, they ain't going to let us, folks. They ain't yeah. going to let us. It's like we were talking about uh, the thing for... <laughs> Blue Rose says, what was in Popeye's pipe? pipe. <laughs> I know what was in that pipe. <laughs> it was spinach. <laughs> the devil's spinach. <laughs> So, Jeff, can I show you something? Please do. Uh, I want to show you what was over my house on Thursday uh, in that brutal heat wave that was coming through. So this was Thursday. Not a freaking cloud in the sky, but this was over our sun. And I just want to show you what happened. Can You, you know, see we've that? had zero, um, zero chemtrails in Kansas since Donald Trump's speech on the 4th of July. Really? Yeah. Well, what do you think about that? Isn't they now we've I've seen these. Oh, I saw you. This it looks like an eyeball. You were saying on your show. It did look like an eyeball, doesn't it? A big eyeball, the eye in the sky. Yeah, there you go, Alan Parsons project. Anyway, I just thought I'd show that to you. Um, what do you think that is? I mean, it's the sun, obviously, with the big kin trail right over the top of it. Yeah, um, I don't know. They say that that's ice crystals. My ass. It was 103 that I came out and took mm. that. I mean, and I live right out almost at 6,000 feet of elevation. So mm. I wonder what it would be. I don't know. Um, it, it, you see these things, and I've seen them all over the world. I know uh, WSO has probably got far more pictures than I do on that. But He's it's, got a bunch of them, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. There's, um, people keep asking me, well, what do you think's going on? And I said, listen. I think we've got cameras now that these could have been here all along. It could have been something new. I don't know. What are you laughing about? <laughs> One thing we know for sure, says jo Joanne, Popeye ate olive oil. <laughs> I guess he included <laughs> olive oil in his diet. <laughs> Puts a whole new perspective. It really does. <laughs> I love this show. I mean, you know, we got a smart audience. There's just no doubt about it. Hey, listen, we only got six thumbs down. That's pretty good. I know. That's, we, we're not doing our job today. <laughs> we are not doing our job today. Um, I, was, I just had a good question to ask you, and I forgot. Oh, what was well. it? Um, I, some, some, I read somewhere where 91% of Democrats expect violence after the 2020 elections. Do you think we'll actually see violence? I think we will. will. They or will they just go to their safe zones and cry like little babies? You know, we're already seeing here in Denver this Antifada group already in, you know. Do you think those are all bought and paid for? Yes, they are. All by yeah. George Soros. Yep. Yeah. Um, they're all bought and paid for. These guys make a pretty good living, too. Um, 
Yeah. The last thing they want to do, there's a certain limit where you can push people, push people, push people. But when you get the general American populace who is locked and loaded, pissed at you, you don't want to do that. I'll just say this for any Democrat that's out there. Show me one socialist country that's a success. There's never been one. Never have, never will be. No, it just it doesn't work in the real world. It only works in academia. In theory. Yeah, in theory, right. Because yeah. academia is not a real world either. So getting back to your question, yes, I expect violence. I, I, I don't like the idea, but uh, what I saw here last week, and, and, and it's all based on no facts. It's just hearsay. 1-800-RENT-A-MOB. Yeah, well, that's about what it is. I mean, it's like the whole Area 51 thing. Do people really think they're going to get near that? I don't care how many people you have show up. I mean, it's insanity for people to even think this. It's yeah. going to get people hurt. And whoever came up with this harebrained idea should be held up on liable charges if anyone is hurt. But it worked real well to distract from the Epstein and the China Lake stories. It did, didn't it, boy? I mean, you know, we have Jeffrey here and his secret uh, diamonds, passports from strange countries. and Jeffrey Epstein, that, folks, not me. You know, Bill Clinton is going to get his prick caught in this. Um, count on it. Uh, they're doing, you heard about the two, the couple that showed up dead on Friday. I did not. Tell us about that. Yeah, murder-suicide. They were uh, close with the Clintons during the whole Epstein thing. Gary Baxter says Area 51 is the retard rapture. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta learn to control. Uh, so somebody showed up, a, a couple showed up dead. Were in, tell us why they showed up dead or theorized. Well, they, they knew they were with the Clintons, you know, during the whole nineties with the whole Epstein thing. The, well, I'm surprised the, they lived this long, man. I am too. I, um, you know, I often say this about one thing about the Clintons. I mean, they bring their own graveyard with them. That's, they do. I mean, man, uh, they've killed so woo. many damn people. You know, when the whole whitewater thing was happening, you know, they were finding bodies all along <laughs> the freaking bank of that river. And I'm going, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to know if there's an evil. And I met Bill Clinton and he's tremendously charismatic. It's very scary. Isn't that odd? Yeah. Is that a trait? Do you think that has, you know, that I don't know. I often wondered. I've someone... met Reagan and I met uh, Reagan. Clinton. I and met Clinton was far more charismatic. Was he? Yeah. People said they loved him. They, they, you know, you couldn't help but not dislike the guy. Yep. I don't know. Anyway. He but, was, he's definitely not a good guy. No, no, it's sad. I, I, I just look at where we are in this nation, and I, I hope that we wake up. Maybe we can help and facilitate that. I just say, you know, just invoke favor on your enemy. Yep. I mean, Electra Magnetica says a friend of hers got taken in Area 51. Hmm. hmm. And then she says, best story ever. Well, not for your friend, but. <laughs> huh. Jeannie Griffin, I never heard this. Bill Clinton is said to have been MK Ultra. It has multiple personalities. Hmm. That's interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I can remember all the times when I was in Vegas, you know, I always saw Janet Airlines leaving all the time. And, you know, I, and I keep on thinking, you know, they have, uh, what is Janet Airlines? It's the old, uh, there it's the air service that takes, uh, the employees from Las Vegas. Oh Vegas's yeah. Yeah. Out to area 51. 51. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when I stayed at the MGM, I had a room that looked right over there and, you know, I keep on thinking, that place can't be all that secretive if you have that many people that are dispersed out. But then someone countered me on this and said, listen, no one knew about the Manhattan Project, and there was over 14,000 people that worked on that. Yeah, they couldn't have kept the Manhattan Project quiet today. No, I don't think so. No, not with social media and everything else. No. Mm -mm. There's no way. I don't know, Jeff. We're living in – does ET exist? I don't know. Um, I haven't met him. I've seen them. <laughs> I'm really studying and thinking about this idea that no malevolent species can leave its home world 
and the implications of that. What are all these other things we're seeing? Are they Tolpe? Are they, what are they, what is it, man? It's got, it's either Tolpe or it's us from another time and another place. You know, they said the Israelis learned from the Egyptians that they can make golems. And yeah. I guess that's what, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, I, I am, I'm thinking about the guy. Didn't the United States Congress have a priest recently do an exorcism? Well, in his opening prayer, he said, I banish all oh, that was wicked it. spirits from this place. Well, they he was a Jesuit, so uh, he's probably doing the opposite, in my opinion. So. <laughs> Bringing them all in? <laughs> yep. I, I, I still contend, uh, do spirits have a conversion? I mean, if they weren't Christian here, why would they be Christian over there? Good and if they, if they were Muslim here, do they... You see, that's why I don't believe in exorcism. I, it's like, well, I think the spirit's jerking with you, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm not, but I'm leaving. Well, it's a game, Wayne. They play like they leave so they can. the church looks good, and they get to bring seven more worse than them back, and the circle continues. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a mafia thing. The church is in league with the demons. They work together. Hello. Hello. I know you, the synchronicity of us this week. I mean, I did the whole thing on Lucifer, that, and you did your show, and I went, there's more of this becoming around. If we can get rid of these antagonists, you know, that are the lead characters of our haunts, guess what? We got a lot of freedom. Yep, we do. We do. Anyway. And there's the end of another hour, Wayne. God almighty, Jeff. What happened? I, I think I just sat down here. My tea is yep. cold, but my, yep. uh, yeah. Bob Lazar, what's he known for? Didn't he uh, say he worked on reverse engineering of one of the craft out there? Yeah, I'm not sure. I, you know, again, I don't get to watch much stuff, so I'm not really. I've heard of Bob Lazar, but I don't know who yeah, or what yeah, he did. It was the guy from KLS um, who did the uh, the story on Bob back in the was it the 70s or the 80s? I'm not sure. I know he's been on Coast a lot, right? Yeah, he has. By it, by the way, speaking of George, um, I see he's. Uh, I like the role he's taken on with Shatner on uh, Shatner's new show. George is on that show? Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, George plays almost a more prominent role than uh, uh, Bill does. And is it, it, it's not, they're not playing roles, right? It's just. No, mm -mm. no. Uh, uh, Shatner's talking about all the areas, you know, he talked about the suicide force that are showing up all over. Where'd you the, see that? Where is it shown? It's uh, Friday night on the History Channel, uh, 9 p.m. Dude, how did I not know this? Man? Yeah, you might want to congratulate George on that. He really did. He does some great commentary. Um, What's it called? It's called William Shatner. Um, the Unexplained. Unexplained. Yep. Yep. Uh, they're bringing in the, uh, who is his name? Is he, uh, the redheaded physicist, uh, astrophysicist. He started, but yeah, they're doing a good, they, they, I like the format. Uh, Bill does a good job in the introducing it, and they go to George for expert commentary. Well, I'm sure that my invitation to come on the show is forthcoming. Well, it should be fun. <laughs> so, yeah. Nice, and George, yeah. yeah. George looking good. You know, the old fart that he is, he's looking really good. How old is George? Well, let's see. When I was with him and Dave Nichols at Laclede, George was in his 50s because he was already salt and peppered and had pretty much, you know, the mustache. George is 69 years old. 69. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And he's, been the, he's been the host of Coast since 2003, January 2003. Is that so long? He's, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's almost 17 years. Goes by quick. It goes <laughs> by really quickly, doesn't it? It does. Uh, Born in Detroit, Michigan. There you go. Well, you know. George was a mover and shaker in St. Louis in the day, and uh, I'm happy for where he's at now. He's 69 years old. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I like George. I think he's really good at what he does. And he does. George is open-minded. I wish more people could take the same projection on life. You know. Absolutely. It could be. Maybe it not be. Who knows? Who knows? The only thing we know for sure is that we don't know for sure. That's and you know what. That's the safest place to be. It is. Well, Wayne, it's been uh, two years. 
It has been, sir. It's been a joy. Looking it forward has to been a two joy. More. And here's the, yeah, here's the two more. How about that? Yeah, let's do another two years and let's see where we're at. Oh, you know what? That'll be interesting because we'll see who the new president is. Oh, we will see who the new president is. I have a yeah. feeling it's going to be the same president that we got now. Oh, you know what? Isn't then, well, we'd be getting close to the next uh, solar eclipse too. Oh, we will. That's 2024, right? 2024. That's Louisville, right. Kentucky, the whole area. Yeah. Because yeah, so we started how long? We See, that's yeah. but the point. That's where I knew because you went off to uh, Nashville. Where, no, yeah, you were in Nashville for the eclipse. Yeah. And you went up to Montana or something? Uh, yeah, Wyoming. Wyoming. Wyoming, Montana, same thing. It was crazy. And like Susie Q says, it's time for pancakes. It is time for pancakes. I can smell them too. <laughs> All right, Wayne, uh, uh, glad you. to be with you again, uh, two years, and we're just getting started. All of you in the chat room, even you that are butthurt, thanks for being here today. Uh, remember the aloe wipes, as Gary suggested. They're very cooling and soothing. And <laughs> until next week, I'm Jeffrey Darry, the Christian Whistleblower, with my friend R. Wayne Steiger. Go subscribe to his channel, watch his programs. You'll be better for it. And Thank until you, next Jeff. Sunday, we'll Bye. see you. Next time. Take care, Wayne. Thank you, Jeff.